So um, we can move into our next section, which is on uh, treatment costs. And my name is Jane Whipple. I'm an analyst on the healthcare team at GAO. I'll be speaking um, about this report on behalf of myself and my colleague, Jad, uh, Chad Davenport, who unfortunately could not be here today because he is out of the country. Uh, but I will do my best to cover the parts that uh, he would want me to as well. Um, so just to go through the objectives of our report, we examined the changes in per patient treatment costs um, and their effect on program implementation. We looked at how PEPFAR's cost information supports countries' efforts to expand treatment, and we examined how PEPFAR has met the treatment spending requirement um, that, they were, that was in the 2008 Leadership Act. So I'll walk through in a little bit more detail about how we answered each of those objectives. For our first objective, um, we found there were a couple of factors that contributed to um, decreasing per patient treatment costs. Um, and first, I'll take a look at some of those changes in the cost. And you can see that here in the figure, I hope, on the screen. Um, and in the graph all the way to the right, you can see how the per patient treatment costs have decreased from 2005 to 2011. Um, these uh, approximations are used um, uh, pef by PEPFAR with four budget codes. And they only include the costs that are specific to PEPFAR for those um, people who are directly supported on ARB treatment. These costs will vary by country. Um, and PEPFAR recently has started to estimate the cost of comprehensive HIV treatment, which is, which is a broader uh, range of services than just the four budget codes used in the figure above. Um, and these estimates, the estimates of uh, comprehensive HIV treatment show similar trends in decreasing per patient treatment costs. There are several factors that contributed to this, uh, the first of which is the increasing use of generic ARV drug products. Um, PEPFAR estimates that in fiscal years 2005 to 2011, it saved almost $934 million by buying generic um, instead of equivalent branded products. And this uh, also will vary by country based on the availability of quality assured products. And that's the process that PEFAR goes through in purchasing these. Um, this also has brought in the selection of WHO recommended products, um, especially the fixed dose combinations, which don't have an equivalent branded formulation, but also has uh, helps to uh, bring down those costs. Um, a second reason for those declining uh, per patient treatment costs is decreasing prices for certain products. In our report, we did an analysis of what happened when the program switched from uh, stabudine to tenofovir based on WHO recommendations. And while the tenofovir-based regimen was originally more expensive, this has uh, declined to be on average with other regimens now. And finally, there were some non-ARV drug costs that also contributed to bringing it down. Um, this is program scale and program maturity. So program scale being mostly the efficiencies gained with larger patient cohorts after a rapid expansion in clinic capacity and infrastructure in the programs that PEPFAR supports, as well as program maturity, which includes one-time investments such as training and equipment and the ongoing costs such as uh, personnel and lab supplies. So realizing those costs over time and then the experience in providing services uh, can lead to some efficiencies gained. The result of which um, has led to uh, PEPFAR being able to support more people on treatment. Um, it, obviously, you would know that the, these are very well uh, published gains that the program has reported. And since the end of fiscal year 2008, PEPFAR has directly supported ARV treatment for over 3.3 million additional people. And in fiscal year 2012, added more people to ARV treatment than in any previous year. And this goes to the number that Todd said earlier, too, which is the 5.1 million people on treatment in the last um, publication. Um, in addition, some country co governments are also contributing additional resources to treatment programs. And this has led to the overall uh, UN AIDS figure of over 8 million uh, people on treatment at the end of 2011, so significant gains in the program. Um, and examining our second objective, uh, we looked at how cost information has supported expanding these treatment programs and um, found that the cost information has uh, really helped them to um, expand programs but has some limitations. So first of which, um, we've, we found that treat, total treatment costs are expected to increase over the near term 
as more people receive treatment. And there's two reasons that we identified uh, were um, having an impact here. So the first of which is there's still the need to address large unmet need. Um, higher treatment goals are going to continue to drive the expansion of the programs and require additional resources. And those estimates put um, the need at 15 million people still. So over 8 million being treated currently, but still a large gap in those requiring, requiring treatment. There's also been changes to eligibility criteria that might affect the total treatment costs. So these are things such as PMTCT and option B plus to put um, all HIV positive pregnant and breastfeeding women on treatment, which would raise that number to 23 million, as well as things such as treatment as prevention. And as countries are considering increasing the um, initiation of CD4 counts to higher than uh, 350, that will also impact that gap in the numbers that need to be treated versus those that are currently treated. So to get at um, that, uh, get at expanding treatment programs, PEPFAR has detailed cost information, um, but that needs to be more timely and comprehensive is what we found after doing our analysis. So they use two complementary approaches to obtain cost information, and each has a different goal and is limited uh, by certain elements. So the first of which is cost estimation, and this is um, based on the PEPFAR ART costing model. Um, and this provides information on cost of delivering comprehensive HIV treatment for, uh, for PEPFAR and for other funders, so that a very uh, large view of where PEPFAR is spending its money and on really how services are being delivered. This is limited by timeliness, however. Most of the studies that go have gone into the model were completed in 2009, and there was typically a limited number of sites in those studies, so typically about nine sites, um, which has grown a little bit as, as they've had experience doing the studies, but um, is definitely a limitation. And then the other approach that PEPFAR has um, been using and has piloted over the past couple years is expenditure analysis which provides a rapid assessment of PEPFAR spending from its implementing partners. It covers more than treatment, but treatment is just at we were, what we were looking at in this report. And it's able to identify um, outliers um, in spending and see if those are appropriate or not in order to bring down costs. Uh, however, the expenditure analysis only includes PEPFAR spending and not the spending of other donors, such as the Global Fund or the country government's contribution. Uh, so finally, our third objective on um, PEPFAR meeting its treatment spending requirement to, in the 2008 Leadership Act, we looked at um, the Leadership Act requires them to, uh, that more than half of the funding appropriated to PEPFAR is spent on specific elements of HIV treatment and care. OGAC's interpretation of that requirement is the budgetary formula you see on the slide here. And they use specific budget codes in the numerator for the, the uh, spending that's specific to HIV treatment and care, and include all the program area budget codes for treatment, care, and prevention that you see in the denominator. And using that formula, PEPFAR has reported that it's met the treatment spending requirement that they're required to do. However, the current budgetary formula does not account for an increased proportion of its funding that's allocated to country capacity building. Um, there are budget codes that PEPFAR has in an other category that are that pertain to country capacity building. And this is consistent with uh, the goal identified in the Leadership Act to promote um, transition to greater sustainability of programs and more broadly country ownership. These areas include strengthening health systems, laboratory infrastructure, and strategic information. And some of these areas also uh, contribute to care and treatment. As uh, PEPFAR continues to evolve and to um, increasingly uh, sustain these programs, a greater share of its allocated resources are probably going to be put into these budget codes. Um, however, there's no current methodology for including these in their budgetary formula to meet the spending requirement. Um, because the 2008 Leadership Act um, ended this year, we didn't make any specific recommendations here, but thought it was an interesting area to point out in conducting our analysis. Uh, finally, we made two recommendations uh, based on our findings, and these are uh, targeted, targeted at the complementary, uh, 
complementary approaches that PEPFAR uses to obtain cost information um, in order to obtain more timely and comprehensive information on their costs. Um, the first of which is to systematically expand the use of the country treatment cost studies that are part of the cost estimation approach um, in order to get more at the characteristics of um, HIV treatment that might help to result in some cost savings. And we also made a recommendation that where feasible, uh, PEPFAR should um, obtain non-PEPFAR spending for the, its expenditure analysis approach. So that way you're getting um, all of the spend for uh, treatment and not just uh, what PEPFAR is spending, especially as countries continue to contribute. Um, and uh, OGAC did um, very rightly point out that their first cost estimation approach is uh, resource intensive and um, they've also been making expenditure analysis more of a priority as they've piloted that and have ramped it up in countries. Um, so the, uh, that's something to consider, as well as uh, the need to work with sovereign nations in getting uh, non-PEPFAR spending in, to include in the expenditure analysis. So I'll end there, and we can go to any questions.